Well, shoot. If I'd have known you would have jumped on early, I would have been on already. On what? What's up? What's up, man? How are you? I am freaking awesome. I just yeah, um, buddy. just wrapped up my second meeting of the day. Ooh. Forward on some stuff. Um, give me 30 seconds. I don't yeah, no worries, man. Undivided attention. Because mm, multitasking. Is a yeah, I remember how that crap. It don't work. Exactly. And I know it. Exactly. I just realized I have all these windows open. And dog, my neighbor's dog starts barking. It's going to get loud. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, authenticity. That's it. People have dogs. What about my dog? What about you? How's everything uh, going in the neighborhood? Okay, oh, man. I'm, uh, I am not concerned. I'm, I'm uh, anticipating my interview later on at 1230. So You're going to handle it. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I'm yeah, I'm looking forward last, to it. Last I'm going to text you something right now, too. So if you want to be part of um the executive mastermind for employees to sure. connect and network and create their careers then. but if you don't want to go you don't have to go no that sounds good man it's uh it's pretty fired up so um any questions before um edgar gets on i don't think so I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I was just going to talk to him about what uh, his his purpose is, like why he started the whole thing and what brought him there. You know, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I'm really excited. So he actually yeah. texted me this morning. Let me tell you what he texted me. Uh, let's see. What time did this guy text me six o'clock in the morning actually oh wow uh he was like how long is the podcast i was like 60 minutes he's like sounds good can't wait um i'm super proud of him you know what i mean like yeah uh i learned something from him yesterday and um it kind of reinforced what we've been talking about um the whole man thing you know and the the man connection and being comfortable in who you are like mm -hmm. um i can fix shit but i hate fixing shit i don't want to fix anything mm. and people are like oh you're not a man I'm like fuck you man like oh fixing better things shit. To do. i was like you fix shit all the time but it's it's like phys you're talking physical stuff. yeah like i don't want to like, change my oil no um so i'm with you on i'm that. super he's actually in i'm uh but i'm gonna give him a minute so uh i'm gonna text him right now is there anything, anything you want to let me, any, hold on, I can't do it. We will let you in two minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, is there anything, any insider information you want me to give you if I know or not, or? Not particularly. I don't, I mean, I watched uh his youtubes yesterday and then i watched a couple of his um tiktoks yeah and uh so yeah, dude he's got a lot of views i mean like 10 10 000, so he's definitely got a little following there so so that's good um yeah no yeah i'm i'm kind of curious as to what what the thing was that pushed him over to like make the decision to to be like a self-help influencer yeah i'm curious where he's going with it um yeah that was my that was gonna be my follow-up because there's a lot but i didn't want to be like dude you're how are you going to stand out there's a shit ton of people doing what you're doing who have a lot more follow followers so how do you what are your thoughts interesting interesting yeah it's you know almost in a way like what we were talking about i really want you to think about too is like 
your kid will be this age in, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I'm, I, that's where I'm curious about. So I want to, you know, introduce you guys. And then I'm going to say like, just so you know, I'm going to say, hey, super proud of you because I really am. And then I yeah. really like to kind of have you steer the, um, this interview, be, especially okay. because it's a family member. Number one, I don't want you to hold mm. back. Okay. Um, number two, um, I'll probably interject and be f disruptive, which is what I like to do. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm telling you as a fan, I want to learn too. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get started on this thing yeah. and um, we'll see how it goes. He will be the youngest. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, definitely. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 really geeked up. So I'm gonna bring him in. Um, his name you already know his name is Edgar. So here we go. This is podcast. Don't even know how many numbers, but it's a lot. We've done a lot, man. We have at least ten. No, yeah, ten. Pretty close. Yeah, there's a lot. So, anyways, all right, here we go. What's up? Hey, Edgar, can you hear us? Says it's connecting to audio right now. Oh, cool. What's going on, Edgar? Hey, man, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, doing well. How you doing, man? Doing well. Hey, man, this how you doing? Good. Good. It's good to meet you. Good to Matt, meet you as well. Yeah, and Matt's talked a lot about you. Definitely some, some good stuff, all good stuff, for sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. So, hey, I want to, first off, um, I want to really tell you, um, super happy you're, you're on this uh, call podcast. Um, you are the youngest one we've actually had so far. Um, mm -hmm. So you're rep representing the youth, uh, the next <laughs> generation, no pressure. Um, Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, but, you know, I um, want to let you know, and I tell you when I see you as well, um, now you'll actually have evidence, so I'll send this to you as well, um, unedited, and then we'll, we'll cut it up a little bit, but told you in the past, super proud of you, um, you know, life is a journey, um, there's a lot of people out there that tell you how to live your life, and those are usually the ones that you don't want to have their life anyway, yes, um, so, uh, Absolutely. Really, really excited to have you on this. I wanted to, you know, this whole podcast got started uh, because of my friend Dave. Um, and um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And I think you have a great message to, to tell people. And let me tell you, I learn from your videos as well. Um, so don't think I'm not watching. Um, I know I you're on. That. Yeah, I'm, I know you're on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. I, I try not to comment too much on TikTok because I still think it's a, a little bit creepy. A guy with gray hair commenting with people, but I'm, I'm getting over <laughs> that one myself. Uh, but yeah, man, super proud of you known for a long time. Um, Thank you, know, you so much. Man. Yeah. I care for you deeply. Um, Thank you. And um, you know, here we go. So Dave, take oh, it man. away, my friend. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, hey, Edgar, uh, uh, thank you so much for being on here. I actually went through and watched a bunch of your uh, TikTok. I didn't comment on the TikToks like Mac, you know, said, but I went through a bunch of those yesterday and checked out your YouTube channel and and learned about something I had never even heard of before. I, I, I've definitely not heard of the FAP. Is it FAP? FAP or no FAP? Uh, no FAP. No yeah. FAP. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I've heard of the addiction to porn and that how it's like corrosive to your mind and the the adrenaline spike and all of that I mean I'm a man so yeah. obviously I have partaken in that before but can you tell me a little bit about a little bit about that is that like one of your main messages to get out there or are you just looking that was just one aspect and you're looking more of a, a um, it's person yeah it's it's definitely one apps aspect of what I'm trying to reach out there especially for more like younger men because mm -hmm. uh when it comes to like my generation like say millennials and even um i think that's why i'm doing really good on tiktok as well because it's more of like a younger crowd um i know that 
there's a lot of guys out there that are grew up watching porn. You know, um, I know that say like maybe for you guys, uh, you guys grew up maybe with like, you know, your typical Playboy magazine and stuff like that. But the thing is with porn, um, it's just like dopamine hit after dopamine hit after dopamine hit. And research has said that it's almost as close, if not the same as a like heroin addiction. Wow. And this can um, this can lead to like problems in the bedroom, problems with, you know, finding connection with actual real life women and just like there's so many problems that can happen. Um, and I know that there's so many guys out there that have this problem. And um, for me, the best way that I was able to actually, um, I just did my research on it because this was such a big problem for me. Um, and it was really embarrassing too. I didn't tell anybody. Mm. Um, but um, I had problems with uh, women, right? Like I had problems with actually being able to have real connections with women and um through my uh doing my research and this was this took like about six years of actually trying to be on nofap and actually and and, for, and i guess to, just to explain nofap it's just uh no masturbation and no porn um in order for you to actually rewire rewire your brain um, so what this does is, um, it helps with not only with, um, being able to strengthen your mind as in mental strength, but, um, just not having that, that itch to want to just get home. Okay. It's time to mm -hmm. let's watch a little bit of porn, you know? Right. Um, yeah. The instant gratification to immediate release like the, the thought exactly. comes in and then you perform that action and then the dopamine hits and then you know i mean i've had issues with other stuff i you know uh, drink or, or smoking weed it's yeah the thought would come in and there was no barrier between the thought and my action there wasn't any yes. type of focused presence and then i would find myself in a spot where i'm like well, shit, I'm here again. How did that happen? I didn't, I mean, I wasn't paying attention. And yeah, and, and, it's a, and it's a slippery slope because mm. once you, once you, uh, you know, once you indulge in that, you just like, well, I mean, I messed up my, especially if you're trying it, if you're trying to actually be on a streak of no fap or, or even just, you know, not yeah. smoking. Weed, Whatever the device is, yeah. Yeah, I did the same thing too with, because uh, I used to be a, a heavy marijuana smoker every mm. day when I say that you can get addicted to weed this day. Yes, you can get addicted to weed as well. I agree. Um, it's the habit that you get addicted to. Yes, it may, yes, may not be the chemical substance, but you're, it's the same like that. I don't know exactly what brain chemical it makes, but it's, you're yeah. looking for that type of. What's well, dopamine? Of, it's definitely dopamine, there you go. right? Um, um, and, and you know when it's bad for you, when not only are you abusing it, but for me, it was just making me lazy. Mm. Like, it was just like, I would smoke weed and I know I had things to do, but it was like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. It was that, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Today, I'm enjoying it. I'm just going to smoke my weed and chill, you know? Mm -hmm. The and, apathy uh, from it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it was the same thing uh, with porn, but with porn, it was just a bigger deal because I know that there's a lot of dudes out there, especially young men that grew up and the first th the first sexual encounter was just porn instead of an mm. actual like connection with a woman um and it's and and um it's about just rewiring your brain a little bit and there's a whole community over it. this is why this community is so large um and it's getting bigger mm. so if you um and it's crazy too because um when you do your research on nofap there's actually it's actually kind of like a um it's kind of crazy because um, the porn industry is actually trying to go against NoFap. Uh, mm. there, there's, there's something, I don't know exactly what it is, but they're trying to like really like get people not to do NoFap just so they can be, it, it, I'm telling right. you, man. I mean, it's, it's their best crazy. customers for sure. You yeah, know. yeah. It's, I mean, they're a business, right? At the end of the right. Day, right. <clears throat> Excuse right. me. Sure, hey, sure. hey, real quick, kind of kind of rewind a little bit just so, sure. I mean, I know Edgar and Edgar knows me and my their stories, but 
um, Dave, you know, maybe one or two couple minutes, just kind of share. Sure. With and then yeah, I, I'm sorry. It kind of went in hard because I was so curious about it. You know, I'm, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's something I'm passionate about as well. Yeah. 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 But I love, I love Dave. Maybe you can share a little bit about Ed, sure. to Edgar, your story, kind of where you started and where you're at now. And then Edgar, love, you know, maybe to share a little bit of your journey on this process. And, you know, the, the biggest thing that we want to get out of this community is, I mean, fuck, there's no right path, in my opinion. Like what I'm doing is not necessarily going to be exactly what any one of you guys sure. are doing. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're all men being able to try to figure this out. And I'm not going to shit on you for because you're doing it this way. As long as you're not hurting anybody or hurting yourself, like live your life. And yeah. I'll tell you what, it's it's the greatest way to do it. But if you can share your story, Dave, with, with Edgar, sure. then Edgar, you, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so I, I have a, I always wanted to have my own psychology practice. And then I kind of got just, I wasn't in control of the path of my life. So I just took a job in insurance. And then that led me down a whole path where um, I built my own business. I owned an insurance agency and I got so burnt out. I just disconnected from the things that were important to me. And and because of that, um, because of that burnout, I was kind of ashamed, I guess, you know, that I, that I had this success and that I did exactly what I wanted to do. And I made more money actually than I thought I would ever make, but none of that brought me happiness at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it actually did the exact opposite. It put me in a place where I was leaving work early to go drink and um, there was a couple instances where it really, you know, it could have cost me my marriage hundred yeah. percent had I kept going down that path, um, and my kids and my livelihood and all of that. And so, um, started to turn it around, uh, did some personal development, got a hold of Matt, actually, uh, we had met a long time ago and, uh, gave me a book to read. And so I actually read it weird. But um, <laughs> after, after a while, uh, things started to turn around and um, I was put in a situation where I needed to sell the business, you know, uh, and so I did, made a great yeah. profit. And um, I, when that money got deposited into my bank account, I was like, holy shit, I'm rich. I am rich. <laughs> And then I paid off all my debts. We put a down payment on a house and all that money's like dwindling away. Yeah. So now I'm at this point where I started to just come into myself, just started to, uh, just started to mentally berate myself for the piece of shit I had become because I did all these great things, but I didn't take any credit for them. You know, and I, I used to say, Oh yeah, a monkey could have done it. So I gave myself no credit at all. Like yeah. not even like another human, an actual animal could have done the job that I did, which is not the case, obviously, but yeah. I just enjoyed, I got, I enjoyed, weird word to say, but I just enjoyed punishing myself, you know, for mentally punishing myself for uh, not being in control of my life. And so uh, Matt and I started this podcast. Actually, we just started chatting and uh, I started dumping out some baggage to Matt and he was nice enough to take my baggage, turn it into something positive and now we're talking here. So it's, it's, been, it's been amazing for me. It's been a nice little journey and uh, now I am working towards, towards new goals and getting that drive back again but pointing it in a direction that I want to be pulled towards mm -hmm. as opposed to working to. Mm -hmm. so. and, and I mean, it, this all kind of goes with what I kind of talk about too on my YouTube channel and on my content about just being like on a purpose that you want to be on mm -hmm. and um, having a high vibration. I guess this can go down with spirituality as well, but just being positive with yourself and what you're doing. I know that whatever you're doing, you're bringing value to society. Um, and I guess that goes kind of, and that's actually really beautiful that Matt is like 
uh, doing this yeah. podcast as well. We need we need sometimes to, as men, we need to be able to talk about our problems, which is um, something that isn't really, yeah, you know, in society, we're not really allowed to in a way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I do. Yeah, I mean, it's, I have, I'm a chatty guy. I will talk to whoever, whenever you're in a grocery yeah. line, let's chat it up. I don't know. Who, what's your kid's name? Sweet. Let's do that. Yeah. You seem well, like a, like a chatty guy. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but when, when it comes down to actually sharing my issues and getting assistance for moving past those, that's yeah. a completely different deal. I'm like, well, I just got to figure this out on my own which yeah. is complete bullshit. I mean, yeah. I ask people for help in all kinds of other ways, but when it comes to myself, that doesn't happen. Do you, do you see that in, in yourself or in the, the community Absolutely. that you're bringing up? Absolutely. Um, for me, the biggest mentor in my life would probably be Tony Robbins. Mm. Um, because a couple, not too long ago, maybe like about three or four years ago, I went through some really heavy, heavy mental health issues, which basically just led to me creating this, the, the TikTok that I have and my content and stuff like that. Um, and I guess I'll just elaborate. Um, <clears throat> so I always knew that I wanted to do something with social media. I just didn't know what yet. Um, so like, I mean, when I see Matt and when I even see yourself, I see you guys more of like the typical entrepreneur that like a businessman stuff like that but for me I always wanted to be more of like a content creator um so I created a boxing uh Instagram and because I really like boxing so um I didn't really know what I was doing but I was gaining a following and from there I was you know I was learning my skills on how to actually create a community how to do my hashtag research, how to actually engage my audience. And I grew my audience to maybe like about 4K followers. And from there, it just kind of failed and flopped. But from there, I'm um, just like, okay, well, um, I want to actually put my face out there. So I created uh, with one of my cousins, um, a comedy meme type of Instagram. And we also made like a YouTube. And so we just started putting content out there as well. Same thing. Um, if good blocked, in the mop, let me tell you, Edgar. You look good. What's in the up? Mop. You look good with the with the mop head. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the with that? That was the. Um, yeah, you remember that, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but um, during that time, um, I was actually suffering through some pretty heavy depression, um, and um, I just. Didn't, I mean, I knew why it was because I never really felt fulfilled because I was always the type of guy to just party. Um, basically, my whole 20s, I just partied. I did a, a, you know, a bunch of drugs. Um, um, I just had fun, right? Um, and that was just like the crowd that I hung out with. And it just catches up to you, man. No matter who you are, it's going to catch up to you if you don't have a, a purpose or you know, because everybody has potential in this life. Everybody has a gift so that they can give so they can add value to, you know, the world. And so um, I didn't know it at the time, but um, depression was probably the best thing that's ever happened to me because um, from there, I started doing my research on, you know, psychology and philosophy, which philosophy became probably my favorite subject. Um, and... Um, you know, spirituality as well. And from there, I just created that this TikTok that I made. Um, and from all the skills that I learned from the other social media, like uh, my boxing one and my, my, my comedy sketch one, I learned how to do hashtags. I learned how to um, engage people. I learned how to talk to people in the community. And um, my TikTok just started growing. I, like, and it's still growing right now, like up to maybe 30K followers wow. which is insane to me yeah um, that's fantastic man yeah and um I, and also because i know that i'm talking to a younger crowd and also because um i know that um the problems that i faced through my depression which i'm out of the depression already anyway but when i was facing them i know that 
there's a lot of men, young men that are going through the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And it goes down with no fat, what I was talking about earlier. It goes down with, you know, psychology. It goes down with um, not being on your purpose because there's a lot of men too that the same thing that I was doing as well. I would just want to party and I would just want to go and have relationships or have, you know, sex with women. And that was it. I never tried to look for a partner. Um, I was always just trying to get laid, right? And like, there's no purpose in that. Like, what's the point of life if you're not creating something or if you're not building something, right? Um, and this is what I'm just trying to teach these guys. And I get DMs all the time. I, I have a DM right now on my Instagram where, that I'm going to reply after this, that, hey man, I need your help, my girl, and this and that. And, and I'm just like slowly, slowly, learning about um people and it's absolutely amazing um i just can't believe i am just so grateful i really am because even if i'm doing this for free i'm, I'm helping people for free i don't care because um it brings joy to my heart it really does and i really do feel like this is actually my real purpose in my life to help people uh and inspire them to grow that's beautiful well, man definitely Thank you. Hey, you know, one of the cool things Edgar, that, you know, you may not even see right now, but in the beginning, yeah, it's for free, but yeah. you don't know what connection you'll eventually make that'll turn this into something crazy. I met Dave helping one of my clients. Eventually Dave became one of my clients, but more mm -hmm. importantly than that, he actually became a friend mm -hmm. after yeah. the fact. And that impact has now led into this, which we don't know what this is going to lead into. Yeah. Um, so I just want to let you know. And then one of the things that even though you should keep the audience here going after, let me tell you what it's doing for myself. And I think maybe even Dave will could comment on this possibly because I don't have young kids anymore. But guys like me who maybe waited a little bit longer and have kids a little younger than you are like, fuck, if I don't start doing something now, I'm jacking up my son or my, or my daughter. I need to see what this guy's doing. You are inspiring me to maybe like, I got to go pay attention to my kid a little bit more because I hear I was chasing the dollar and, you know, I got to tell both of you, thanks for sharing because you both matter. And I do see you guys. And so I appreciate you guys for sharing that um, story with us. So Dave, you know me, I like to get a little facilitation once in a while, but I'll get it back to you now. No, no, no. I, I appreciate it. That's why we work well together. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I, and Matt brings up a great point. I was just talking to my son. The other, I have an 11-year-old son and 14-year-old daughter. And I mean, I have a specific memory of coming home from the, the hospital with my daughter, you know, exhausted, right? And put her down in a crib and I just laid flat out on my bed. And the first thought that came to my mind was, holy shit, prom. I'm like, my, my daughter is two years old, or two days old at that <laughs> moment in time. But you know, now she's 14. Now that prom's not real far away. And, not at uh, all. Yeah, not at all. Know. But Couple yeah, years. let's not, let's not yeah. talk about it anymore. Let's not, <laughs> let's just on. Um, but with and, and the same with my son he's growing up super fast in this quarantine thing he's kind of we're not like a real outdoorsy family but we do travel a lot and do outdoor stuff but he is becoming more and more focused in on the computer and being comfortable you know so that that yeah. level of comfort saturates everywhere right now at least in my own opinion and and me included in that and so we've been talking about grit, like I've, we've been doing, you know, some more push-ups. And he said, one of the most, obviously besides I love you, dad, but one of the most beautiful things that he's ever said to me was yesterday, we've been working on, we've been working on push-ups. So I'll just, he'll be watching TV and I'll say, Porter, give me 10 push-ups. So I like just do them. And yesterday he said, dad, it's, it's like, they're just getting easier. You know, the more I do, the easier it gets. And I was like, yes. So it's that, that, that yeah, muscle, exactly, baby. exactly. So how, how are you, do you focus in on, on your, on your community, on, on grit and like being uncomfortable? Like how, how do you, what can I tell my 11 year old son or what can I do with him to, 
push him in that uncomfortable area? Well, definitely fitness is probably one of the best ways to show him because um, with me, it was a uh, fitness because I, and the thing is, um, I started to actually go on my fitness journey around when COVID hit. Mm. So this is, this goes just, this goes down to like mindset. Everybody made the excuse. Oh, the gyms are closed. Oh, we're just, you know, gonna, we're just going to chill at the house and just eat and just get lazy and stuff. But I was like, no, I'm going to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find a way. Um, like, I'm not going to be, I don't want to be out of shape anymore. I'm going to find mm. a way. So I did my research and I bought these little resistance bands. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing. If, if you have resistance going against your muscle, you're gonna, your muscle's going to grow. Your muscle doesn't know if it's a dumbbell or if it's a uh, body weight. It doesn't know. It just knows that you're giving it stress. Mm -hmm. So I, I did my research. I learned. And from there, I learned almost everything I had for about fitness. And I actually kind of started training people. And this is how I found my love of um, coaching people through training people. And I also knew that people had really, really low, low mental strength when it came to just anything, basically, you know? Right. Because anything right now that's uncomfortable is real rough. Yes, exactly. Like, it, so when I started training people, um, they were super motivated the first week. And then the second week came and they were like, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to be able to do this. Or, oh, I ate McDonald's today. And I'm like, all right, well, that's fine. Just keep going, right? And then by the third week, it was done. That was it. They're done. I'm not going to do it no more. I'm like, all right, that's fine. And I would go to the next client and the same thing and the same thing. And then over time, I found out that, okay, well, people need motivation. People need mindset. And so I just wrote down notes. I just wrote down all these notes about mindset, about motivation, about the levels of fitness, which I have five levels of fitness, by the way, um, which are um, mindset, community, nutrition, training, and consistency. Um, which I tell my clients and all that stuff that I learned from fitness, I'm applying it to what I'm trying to do now with, which is my self growth, uh, self development coaching. Um, and I've already started coaching a couple people. And, um, like I said, um, I'm still learning, um, just by talking to people, I'm still learning as much as I can. Um, but and I think that's great. I think any good leader or coach learns every day, learns yeah. from the people they're working with who may be, I don't, well, that's what I, I know Matt gets something out of what we're doing. I absolutely know that, but yeah. he was um, somebody that I could bounce stuff off of and yeah. hear how crazy it sounded when, you know, it resounded back to me. I was like, Oh, that sounded stupid. Not stupid, but <laughs> not well thought out. You know, yeah, so. you know, and, and Matt has been such a big help for me as well, because over these years of being on my journey, I guess, through being a content creator, mm -hmm. um, I would just message him randomly. Like, he was the only person. I would just message him like, hey, um, do, you, do you have any, I don't know, I don't really remember the messages, but more like, oh, do you have any books on self-development? Or do you have any books on entrepreneurship or something like that? And he would be like, yeah, do this or watch this video or listen to this, or meditate, or, and I'm just like, thanks a lot, man. You're the best. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, bro. <laughs> you really yeah, have helped me. Proud of you, Edgar. you know, I love yeah. you very much. And, and people will look back 10 years from now, like, fuck, we should have done it the way Edgar did it. Mm. <laughs> That's going to be one of the, yeah. the, and you'll just smile like, hey, man, it was just my journey. This is how I got there. Yeah. yeah. That was actually going to be one of my follow-up questions. So we were talking about my son and, and grit and, you know, pushing him to be uncomfortable. Um, you know, how the, I'm not aware of the pitfalls that, that of ease of accessibility will bring on. I mean, obviously somewhat, I have my own phone and I find myself in line staring at my phone as opposed to maybe chatting with the guy in the grocery line in front of me, but same, same. we're just, so addicted to our phones. It's right there. It just keeps coming yeah. out of my pocket without thinking about it. And that's all he knows, like distance learning, you know, they're learning right now on zoom. Like he has yeah. his switch that he plays. He has his phone that he plays with his friends and they'll do a zoom and then they'll play everything together. So he lives a life of interconnectivity without a physical 
presence. Yeah. Can you maybe give me some pointers on, on how to lead him down a path where he's going to feel okay with being uncomfortable or how to avoid certain pitfalls? So, yeah, like I said, through fitness, that would be the best way because once he starts seeing results like he did, like you said earlier, like, mm -hmm. oh, like I'm getting stronger, you can really just um, tell him that this is just how life is going to be as well. Because, I mean, we the only way we're going to grow is through challenge. Mm -hmm. um, with kids, especially young, young kids, it's hard to for them to really get it in their heads. But maybe you can have him join a sport um something that he likes like a sport or if he plays like you said he plays video games switch mm -hmm. um you can relate that to video games because video games are actually very similar to like um a sport or something like that like you play a game and you suck in the beginning uh, right. but you're going to like if you like the game you keep playing it even though you suck or you get getting killed or whatever or you keep mm -hmm. losing um, you keep going back, keep going back and you're learning and you're learning patterns and you're getting better and you're starting to beat the levels. It's the exact same thing in life. It's the exact same thing in fitness and in a sport. It's the, it's life is a game. You know, that's why mm -hmm. I like to tell a lot of my clients as well. Life, life is just a game. And I think that's the best way that you can give him the best analogy because mm -hmm. kids love video games. So you could just be like, you know what, man, sometimes you need to go through hard stuff, but it's okay. Just like you playing your switch, it's the same thing in life. You you when you if you fail, it's not really failure; it's only an opportunity for growth. Um, sometimes kids have a hard time uh, really <laughs> grasping that, you know. <laughs> Don't we all though? Sometimes. <laughs> I still have a hard time. Right. I still attach myself to my failures, you know. But. Hmm. That's a good way. That's a good way to put it. Attaching yourself to your failures. It's true. Yeah. We identify with with our failures, and then that's where self doubt comes. Like mm -hmm. if we like the reason why we have self doubt in ourselves is because we look back on a time that we have failed, and we are we identify with that failure instead of being like, um, you know what, I learned from that, and now I'm gonna not do whatever I did that I messed up on. Mm -hmm. People just like. Um, they linger on those negative thoughts. And that that's just something that um, I learned throughout the years because I was such a negative person in my head um, that I had to, I just wrote everything down, you know, like, dude, you got to stop being so negative with yourself. Mm -hmm. You're lowering your vibration. This is a real thing too. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be able to be positive with yourself. And another guy that really helped me as well on my journey was Gary V and I know Matt knows I mean I'm sure you guys know who Gary V is right yeah um, I love a guy that cusses all the time I just yeah do. that guy <laughs> I'm like I can see myself in you right there <laughs> yeah like he's uh, well he's more of like down my alley a little bit when when it comes to like content creation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. so a lot of the things that he says I just apply it to my content you know and my mindset but yeah I went on a whole spiel right there man you know no Good stuff, for sure. Yeah. So with with what you're doing right now, I, I know that you're doing it for free or you have some clients who you're getting an income. Do you, yeah. do you see yourself on a path? Do you have a path that's, that's drawing you towards, you know, turning this into an income producing thing so you can help more people? Yes, yes, eventually, yes. I wanna grow my uh, social media presence as much as I can. That's my first thing because I'm actually pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. um i want to transfer my audience from tiktok to my youtube channel which is kind of happening um and to my instagram so that's just my first mission right now is just to grow my audience and give them as much value as i possibly can mm -hmm. um for, for free it doesn't matter but i right. do take clients and um i need to learn more about the entrepreneurship side meaning like maybe use sales funnels, um, mm -hmm. um, being able to advertise my things, um, like maybe just taking some mentorship classes on stuff like that. Um, I still don't know much about that stuff. I'm more of like a content creator first than a mm -hmm. business entrepreneur guy. Um, but that's just part of the journey, you know? So definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it needs as a, I mean, you're a small business owner right now. 
you know, you're, you're working on making your business. Yeah. So you are an entrepreneur, traditional or otherwise, you, yeah. you still have to have foundations of doing what's best for your clients. Um, while building something at the same time, you know, because yeah. obviously you're what you're what you're talking about is is what people need to hear, and yeah. the the ability to get more people to hear that is going to be dependent on. I mean, you're going to have to make a living at some point to support yourself, to to build up, to support yourself, to build up, to support yeah, yourself. Exactly. And so, um, yeah, no, I think that's great, man. I think there's a lot of different opportunities for you to uh to blow that out of the water thank you and i mean the, the internet's pretty insane you know like um Great. never turns off it, yeah <laughs> the internet i mean you, there's so much reach on the internet you know so like i, I can only we i mean us all of us we can only just reach we can only go up if we really try um we can we can especially with this podcast um uh with youtube and stuff like that there's a lot of ways where we can reach people just by the internet than it was like maybe 20 years ago when yeah. without the internet. No, right. I'm sorry, Matt, what were you going to say? No, I was going to actually say something that you should really look at and define is what's your time worth. Yeah. And then work back from there and create the packages and act as if you already are charging because the real, the real, my opinion, like I spend a lot of money on coaching I just got a quote and I think, I, I don't know if I told Dave, I told somebody where it's $60,000 for a year, one year commitment, yeah. that's five grand a month. But let me yeah. tell you what that then does. Minimum 10 X. Mm. So my question to you is on a smaller scale to start with, what's your time worth? You got to validate that time. Yeah. And, and you know why most people quit? They don't have skin in it. Like paying a coach is, is one of the most important things. I, I have clients that I fire after 90 days and I charge them. I say, look, in the first 90 days, if you're not doing your stuff, I fucking fire you because you're frustrating the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have no time for, for wasting with any of your crap. So I charge them a, a 90 day um, fee. And I tell them, I'm planning on, on firing you in 90 days. And guess what? Most of them aren't there after 90 days. Yeah. So I make 1500 bucks for 90 days, spending less than six hours in 90 days. Yeah. So that's what I feel my time is worth. Figure out what your time is worth. Mm -hmm. And if you, if I was hiring you as a coach, I'm actually hiring you as my accountability partner. And, and really that's when things change. So find out what your target market is. And people are like, oh, why would you want to pay for a coach? It's on YouTube and all stuff. Yeah, it's great. All of the information is there, but I'm paying you to keep me accountable. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And um, well, I'm actually going to be coming out with a fitness program next year. Okay. It's going to be like about a four month program. So right before, like about four months before the summer hits, so you can get ripped for the summer. Um, and I'm going to be working with a mentor on that, you know, so I'm actually kind of excited for that. He's going to teach me about sales funnels and all this stuff and all these things that I need to learn in order for me to actually grow not only my, my fitness business, but also my, um, I guess you can call it self-development coaching business, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I would start DMing people, you know, on LinkedIn and different, the platforms that you're on yeah. and the people that have what you want and say, Hey, look, I need your help. Because the same way people are reaching out to you is how I, I, I mean, that's what I, I used to knock on people's doors. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is we're all in different cities right now and we're all connected. So the mm -hmm. internet's made the world smaller, mm -hmm. faster, and you could, you could DM somebody right now in freaking Australia and say, hey, hey, bro, I need your help. Connect. And now you've got an international business. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it I'm talking a ring to, to it, international business. Yeah, yeah. right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually got to make a LinkedIn account because I know that uh, mm. it's going to give me a, I don't have a LinkedIn account. I should. Yeah, or what, whatever. Yeah, whatever the accounts are. But like, I'm so proud of you and, and you know, Dave's got some really cool systems that he did to 
um, buy back some of his time and create a funnel of how you used to get clients. And you're going to be able to take that into your new career and mm-hmm. be able to leverage that as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it turned out, I'm, as Matt would say, ambitiously lazy for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, I was in a job that I, you know, that I didn't particularly enjoy um, mm-hmm. and I wanted to separate myself from it. Not necessarily a great thing to do, but uh, but yeah, man, I, you know, brought on people and, uh, we worked referrals. We worked, um, we worked Google, uh, we had a system of bringing in new leads and then transferring them into a sale and then, um, taking that sale and making sure that each one of their, you know, if they're willing to put our name out there, uh, each one of the people that they knew got that same level of care and consideration. And I think it's people, people want to be understood and they want to be seen. Yeah, so for just sure. Bottom line. So if you can yeah. provide that as your foundation, there's no way you're going to fail. As long as you keep driving that in there, if they want to know that, that you're there for them, Mm-hmm. And just everything that I saw says that you are. I mean, I watched a whole bunch of TikToks. I actually downloaded TikTok on my phone and put it on there. That's how, <laughs> that's how interested I was. Yeah, Thank you're welcome. You. Appreciate it. So, uh, so yeah, man. Um, Matt, you were uh, were you going to say something earlier, or yeah. I just got off track? No, it's cool. No, it's good. Like, I think that may be the next step for you, Edgar, because you have a great mm-hmm. message and. I think you're you're in a unique position where you right now can affect individuals like Dave and also your your millennials because millennials get a bad rap. Let me tell you, I think millennials are one of the smartest generations. Most adaptive, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe, you know, prior to when they talk about the great generation, you know, the World War II generation. Like my generation, we are fucking stupid. We wanted to do everything so fast and do this and do this and bust our ass. And guess what we did? We ended up busting up our bodies and not taking care of ourselves and, you know, growing old faster for what? And so you guys came in and you're like, look, the American dream, you know, the American dream about owning your own home was a fucking bank idea. Yeah. Mm. Like the shit of all these things where it's like, and, you know, I shared with Dave, you know, about you coming on, like one of the things that I'm like, man, these guys got it figured out because they're able to, at a, at when we were raising kids, like at your age, Edgar, fuck, I had two kids and a, and a wife and a mortgage <laughs> yeah. and trying to figure all this shit out. I didn't have the luxury of failing and trying. And, and right now, like, our generation is like looking at you guys and shitting on you guys. Like you guys are fucking lazy. And what are you guys talking about? They're figuring it out to fail forward because in their thirties and forties and fifties, their shit's going to be a lot better than ours. Yeah. And so that's where I'm curious to see where, you know, you just maybe need a little bit of tweak here and there on the entrepreneur yeah. stop. Mm-hmm. But I suggest you act as if, and figure out how to generate. And even if it's five bucks subscription or a $500 an hour client, whatever that is, you have to get it mm-hmm. defined. But you're a proven concept. Yeah. And I um, mean, it, it does go to show like exactly how you said it. Because you guys, it is the older generation really does know about old school business, entrepreneurship and stuff like that. And, they, and it's true. Um, you guys are, have more grit for sure. You guys have more mental strength because... Me as a millennial, I'll admit it, we are kind of a little bit weak-minded a little bit, you know? And I mean, that's okay. We're a little bit more privileged because it was, it's a little more, it's more easier nowadays to grow up than it was maybe back in the eighties or, you know, uh, in the, in the seventies, um, times are just different. Um, but I think the thing that helped me a lot was just self-awareness, just knowing that, okay, my life was easy, you know, uh, Mm. I was kind of a little privileged. I was kind of a little spoiled brat a little bit, you know? Um, and through that, I just learned that maybe I do need to go through some challenges and adversity 
And I think that was the reason why I got depressed. Um, I mean, I know it's crazy to say that, but I think it was supposed Not to Not crazy happen. at all, my friend. This, this, that statement is why we're here. They, yeah. it, when you say something like that, it's meant like I was in, I suffer from depression and I'll, I'll go deep. Like it doesn't happen as much anymore. But mm -hmm. when I, w I would get so depressed that I didn't want to feel better. I wanted to just bury yeah. myself further down. It's and it crazy. happened. It's crazy. It's almost yeah. it's like a downward spiral that you don't want to get out of. Which, when you say it out loud, doesn't make any sense. But it that feeling is there. Yes. Like you just are able to disconnect mm -hmm. even further from where you, well, from whatever was causing you that pain in the beginning. Yeah. How did you, how did you deal with that, or how did you pull yourself out? Um. So for me, I didn't even know I was depressed um until it really hit like um like a couple days back in like maybe 2016 but I was depressed for like years before that like maybe mm. two or three years before that and it was like slowly creeping up on me because I was just saying really bad negative things about me on my head when I would be at work I would be like you know you're a piece of shit you're um you're not gonna make it in this world you have you have nothing um and it was just an accumulation of just negative, negative, negative thoughts and negative mindset that it finally just like, um, it just dawned, it just came on me. And like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to the point where I just, you know, had suicidal thoughts and like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be here anymore, things like that. Um, but the crazy thing, like, I mean, for me, the way I got out of it was meditation. Meditation mm -hmm. and, and of course my family, of course. I mean, I love my, my family. Um, without them, I don't know if I would be here, honestly. Um, they were so supportive, obviously, you know, I've, um, yeah. I love them so much, but, um, uh, I found meditation as well. And I was able to get to a place of peace for like at least five minutes and then back to my depression. Right. And slowly I just focused on my breath, meditated. And I was, um, and, and now, um, just thinking about meditation is already giving me that relaxation. So because of my depression, I was able to get to a place where I can meditate whenever I want. Yeah. I can meditate right now for like five minutes and I'll get to a place of relaxation and all my negative thoughts and anxiety and all that stuff goes away. And I really want to help teach people this stuff. Um, but meditation was the biggest tool that got me out of my, my depression. And it was slow. It was, right. it was, it was a crazy journey. <laughs> I think that's very, important very to say, because in the, in the age of where everything is going like this, meditation is the exact opposite of that. Yeah. And, and that separation that you have to have in order to pull yourself out of that depression is provided by silence. You know? Yeah. And it's crazy. It's like always there with you. Like, mm. like no matter where you are in the world, um, you can always just relax and get to a place of just peace of mind. Um, and I always tell people that sometimes happiness is kind of overrated a little bit because happiness comes and goes. It's all about being content and being at peace, meaning like you accept your negative thoughts as well as your positive thoughts. You know, you're more of the observer mm. when it comes to that. And that's how you get to a place of meditation. Some people have a hard time um, really grasping that, you know, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's difficult when you call it, I mean, I understand that. And I've been trying to do that, that the more present I become, the more I become the observer. Yes. Because yes. I'm able to like step away and like pull away from those negative thoughts or, mm -hmm. and honestly pull away from those overly positive thoughts too. I mean, you know, there are times where I think I'm pretty amazing, but you know, the, those, those, that it's, it's also oh, can be self-inflated, you know, to yes, where you, yes. that's not really how it is. I'm really not that amazing at that yeah. moment in time. Um, but, but yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, don't you think when you guys get away from what you want to be, that contradiction is really the pain. Um, meaning like, hey, I want to get into shape, 
but the contradiction is that that fucking McDonald's cheeseburger is is more <laughs> important to me at that moment. And then after I eat it, I feel like shit. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to work out. And then I lie to myself. And by me becoming a liar is really one of the issues that really affects us more. And then we're out of mm-hmm. balance. I just yes. think it's the contradiction of, of what society is telling you guys have to be is really what's fucking up everybody. Like being an entrepreneur was not a cool thing, Dave, two decades ago. Even yeah. Gary Vee says it, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, I used to be like, oh, you're in sales. Oh, you, you own your own company. Oh, you're starting your business. Like, why the fuck? Why don't you go get a job? Go to school, yeah. get good grades so you can get a job and be normal. I never liked that. That's why it was a contradiction. I, I'm a bad fucking employee. Who the yeah. hell would hire me? <laughs> like, I don't, when you, when I disagree with you, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I think. And maybe I shouldn't be an employee then. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I let my I, clients know that as well. Like, hey, I'm going to serve the shit out of you. But if it's wrong, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. And I'm willing to lose you as a client. And you're definitely right with um, entrepreneurship being, I guess, cool nowadays. But even then, I still get, and this, I get it from my family as well. I still get like, you're trying to start your own business. Why don't you just go to school? It's easier. It's an easy path. Get a certificate. Do something with computers. They pay a lot. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to <laughs> be, I want to create my own legacy. You know what I mean? Like, I want to create my own, my own thing for myself. I don't care if I don't get paid as much as I, I just want to do something that I'm passionate about. Um, and I know that down the line, as much, the more I learn, maybe it's going to take five years, 10 years. I don't care. Um, I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow and I'm, and I'm going to make money off of this eventually, you know? Right. Well, and that's the thing, your family, your, your inner circle, the people that truly love you, they really just want what's best for you. And they're trying to protect, protect you. Yes. And sometimes that's their intentions are right, but it's not. And if, I learned this a long time ago. If you take the easy way out, life gets hard. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, that's exactly why I got depression, you know? That's literally the reason why I was depressed. I mean, Dave, you're a successful guy and you're miserable. Why the fuck would you want your son or your daughter to follow in that step? Yet, what do we tell them? Do the same thing I did. Yes, and, and that's why I think the most brilliant people in the world are entrepreneurs. Um, you know, people like Tony Robbins and people like Gary Vee. I mean, their mindset and their belief in themselves is just like, I mean, they're visionaries. Yeah, um, I will say there's some crappy entrepreneurs out there. But <laughs> in that aspect, I couldn't agree more. I love both of those guys. But man, yeah. you walk into some well, businesses yeah. and you're like, what? how are you still in business? You're an asshole. <laughs> Yeah, but not everyone should be an entrepreneur. There's some, there's, we're always going to need people to change our oil. And there's something noble in someone who loves to work on cars and changes the oil and is happy and then goes yeah. home and spends time with their family. It's yeah, the ones that absolutely. fucking hate to work on cars and then go home, drink a beer because they're miserable and ignore their family. Yeah, because they're miserable. They're depressed and they don't even know why. Mm. Yep. And then they're using um, drinking as a coping me- mechanism, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's very common. I mean, that's scary thing. what guys are expected to do. You're supposed to, like, make money, hate your job, and go home and have a beer. Yeah. Like, I mean, we even joke about it. We even joke, oh, absolutely. oh I hate this job, you know? Or, uh, oh, another day, another dollar, you know? Like, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what a crap. I, I never realized what a shitty statement that was. Right. And I'm saying... Well, what about this? Like, I don't surround myself with people that don't love their spouse. Mm, like, yeah. I got buddies who have been married three, four times. I don't, I, I may talk to them for business, but I don't bring them into my inner circle and shit, I don't bring them into my family. Yeah. Right. Because I can't get infected with them. I don't, if you talk shit on your wife on a consistent basis, I can't be with you because I'm happily married. Mm, my yeah. wife fucking still loves me she put up with me when i was an idiot and now i'm an older idiot Same. and i'll tell yeah. you what Edgar, 
I'm happier with your Tia today than I was when we first met. We're like kids. And I'm not even tell you what we're planning this weekend. Because it's just it. stupid. Like, I see like hey, uh, you want to go here? Sure. Let's just go because we can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's where you want to get to. Like the yeah. whole purpose of that stuff. And so I'm really fired up and, you know, let you guys know that I thought that was a fast hour. I agree. Yeah. I mean, it went, it flew by. I learned some great things and learned some great tips from a guy who is much younger than me. And I love that. I love Thank it. Thank you so very much. I learned a lot from you guys as well. Um, you, you seem really cool, Dave. You seem like a really cool person. Matt, Thanks, thank man. you for having me. This is this is really cool uh, podcast you guys got going here. I hope you guys, not, I wish you guys nothing but, you know, success and the best. Same to you, man. Well, we Same appreciate it. Um, Dave, we're going to wrap it up, but we're going to let you go. I'll, once we're done, we'll, I'll send you the um, unedited, feel free. Um, Dave, are you cool if he cuts it up and does whatever he wants to it? Anything you want to do, man. We're we're doing this for each other and for everybody else who hears it. Absolutely. Sure. And leverage Absolutely. leverage us, man. Edgar, like leverage. Hey, look, reach out to people. I, you know, business owner, business owner who sold his business. You know, hey, we're you know we're older, obviously, than you, but leverage that to be like, look, I got invited on this podcast with business owners who are are asking my advice. How to not only improve themselves as men, but also how to help their kids in, in our community. So we need everybody. Absolutely. So I appreciate you so much. Um, I tell you every time I see you, but I'll tell you again, super proud of you. No matter what happens, fail faster. And uh, mm. I can't wait to see what happens in the next 10 to 15 years with you. Thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate you. All right, brother. All right. All right, let Take me talk to you later. Dude, that was great, dude. I think that was by far the best. Yeah, because you know you were present. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was he. He's a good, solid dude, man. Like he, uh, he's got his shit together, you know. Or he's working on putting it all together and moving it forward. But he is, he is working on it. You know, you could see how his mind is trying to do the best and figure out how we can do better than that could you relate to him yeah absolutely he's just a younger version of us like he's going to get to our age and he absolutely. may have a little bit more tools in his tool chest than we did i thought what you said about um millennials having a little more time to figure it out I'd never really thought about it like that. And I, I had never really thought about that as a positive, actually, just as a negative, that they're too comfortable and that they need to get out and, you know, be uncomfortable or go to school or like move out of their parents' house or whatever. But the ability to have that love and go through all that shit that you might go through in your 30s, they're doing in their 20s in hopefully a safe space. You know what I mean? And maybe with the people who love the kids. And, yeah. What's that? Can you imagine if he had kids and he was fucking up his kids? Dude. And that's had he moved out and like gone out on his own and found a girl and got married and had kids, like he would have been us. And he uh a lot of people his age are taking a different path where they're like, Well, I don't need to do that right now. I got time to do whatever I want. I'm just gonna figure it out at the moment and I'm gonna well, hopefully fail faster. Yeah. Know, in that and maybe find time. a partner for life this time. Totally. Totally. And and have the ability to know who you are. Because when you're, I mean, I met Heather at, I was 20 and she was 19. Mm. You know, so we grew up together. You know, <clears throat> so having the ability to grow up, figure out who you are, and then find somebody that matches I think could maybe have a dent in the uh, divorce rate. We happened to work out because I gave Heather what she needed and for, for a long period of time and gave her room and space to figure out who she was. And then um, 
we had a friend who passed away, uh, uh, her best friend's younger brother, um, mm -hmm. passed away from an over accidental overdose and um, it changed her life. And that we, I will never forget sitting on a couch with her because she was doing a lot of work on herself and she was like, I don't know what the, what's going to happen if you don't start coming in my direction. If you wow. stay on the path that you're on, I'm really doing a lot of work to, you know, doing therapy and, you know, reading and doing things to better herself. And I was like, fuck, I guess it's time. And, you know, a decade later, I'm, I'm finally working on it. Well, that's not true. I've worked on it before that, but yeah, but still. But it's a process, man. And like, that's the difference. Like that dude is us. Mm -hmm. He's your son. He's, you know, your nephew. He's us. Mm -hmm. And he's trying and to figure you, it out. Yeah. And how comfortable he was able to share what he shared. Dude, that was crazy. Like the fact, I, I guess the, the NoFap thing, I went in straight on that because I was so blown away by it i guess okay. that you know that you can just people feel comfortable going on these social media platforms and just saying their shit and it's not what it's not what men are supposed to do you're not supposed to say your shit like you're supposed to bury that way way deep deep down and then yep. never let it come out yeah but if if he can share that stuff all I was thinking about was, why can't I? Absolutely. So, well, my friend, it was a fucking intense, fast hour. Yeah, it was great, man. I, he, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I think he's a solid dude. Yeah, so I'd love to have him back on. Love to see where he goes, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we, we continue down this journey. But uh, it's 11. It's 11. Right so, on, man. All right, best of luck to you today. Have you, fun, sir. be you, kill it, which I know you're gonna do. Thank you, and it sir. Don't matter, and remember, it don't matter anyway. It doesn't matter anyway. It's just that one thing. Yeah, just that one thing. Just that all one right. thing. All right, man. You take care. See it. All right.